From our studios at historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park, it's Okaboji Broadcast with Jeff Thee. Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast, everybody. Rainy day in the Iowa Great Lakes. I'm Jeff Thee, and today I have with me Jason Harrington, who's the CEO of Lakes, President and CEO of Lakes Regional Healthcare. And Jason, hey, welcome. Thanks for joining me, man. Oh, thanks for having me, Jeff. You know, nothing else I'd rather do on a rainy day, although the rain's very welcome for most of us. So It is very, and I'd rather have precip in this form than that other stuff we got about a week ago, which shall remain nameless at this point. <laughs> no question. What we're getting now is killing the remainder of the nameless uh, precipitation. Just, so. the, just the way I, we're going to clean things up just in time. For you guys to get going on some construction there at Lakes Regional, you announced uh, that Avera Home Medical Equipment is going to be opening a new store right there on your campus, on the Lakes Regional Healthcare campus. What is this all going to entail, Jason? Yeah, we're very excited, Jeff. Actually, we've been in conversation with uh, Avera Home Medical for probably the better part of a year, talking about the, the advantages of having a home medical equipment store on the campus. Um, we've, we've really been, what's limited that is we really didn't have space for it prior. And with the opening of Lakes Regional Family Medicine and Lakes Family Practice uh, Clinic relocating, it really gave us an opportunity to take that discussion to the next level. And, and uh, so, so we're excited to be able to do that. That, that uh, The store, the new service line that we'll have, have will actually be a joint venture partnership between Avera Home Medical and, and Lakes Regional Healthcare. So, so we'll be 50 50 partners uh, in that service line. Very excited about that. Avera's got extensive uh, knowledge and experience in, in managing and operating home medical equipment stores. In fact, I think they have 15 home medical equipment stores within um, within the company. Okay. And so certainly have a lot of experience in doing that. And so, so we're looking forward to that partnership. Cool. Then now, where is it going to be located then, Jason, and about how many square feet are we talking? It, yeah, I think most people that are familiar with the campus, so Lakes Family Practice was originally on the northwest corner of the campus, Right. so the closest to Highway 71. So the store itself will be approximately 2,500 square feet. It'll occupy about a third, maybe 40% of, of that existing Lake family practice space uh, it'll be located actually on the the side furthest west okay. so furthest closest to highway 71 right uh, so so it really provides great store front frontage if if you want to think about it that way uh, connects it to the clinics and the rest of the hospital and i think will provide a, a great deal of of enhanced access for our patients and the community and uh, um, others who have needs for home medical equipment yeah, absolutely, and I was, that's what I was going to ask next, Jason. Why this is important to your, oh, your uh, patients being released, your outpatients, and all this to have it right there on the footprint. Yeah, it's it's very important, Jeff. I think I'll talk about the inpatient side for a minute. O oftentimes, after a patient leaves the hospital, um, they may have you know various needs in order to live um, safely and securely with a high quality of life and back in their home and, and oftentimes that will include home medical equipment it will include oxygen it may include CPAP uh, may include a wheelchair could include a lift it, just a variety of things and, and I think oftentimes you know it's like anything else once someone leaves your care or leaves your premises it, you know ensuring that, that they're compliant with what they're supposed to be doing becomes much more difficult right and, and i think while they're here and, and they're kind of a captured audience and we can say hey you would really benefit from um as you get home from a portable oxygen right. as, as one example or you would benefit from uh, a lift of some kind or you benefit from a scooter or a wheelchair or uh, you know a host of other things that uh, the home medical equipment service line will will have and, and be able to accommodate so that so that's really the inpatient side I think on the clinic side, similarly, you know, we have an orthopedic clinic, Northwest Iowa Bone and Joint on the campus. We have a family medicine clinic in Lakes Regional Family Medicine. And, and oftentimes, post one of those visits, again, there may be a need for, for something in the home that uh, that allows you to transition back home safely and, and securely. And, and quite frankly, in, in the midst of COVID, um, you know, we, we've attempted, and I think that the across the country, we've done 
more things at home to, uh, to, to prevent people from having to be hospitalized or otherwise. And so I think pe- people would rather be in their home. Yeah. And I think um, the home medical equipment service line will provide even greater opportunity for that. Yeah, the, the health care that you provide uh, doesn't end for you the, the second they foot, uh, stepped uh, outside from your doors or off of your parking lot there. This uh, helps them ensure that they're continuing to get the, the help they need uh, and uh, from your supervision there. It, it really does. I think we have a responsibility to make sure that patients can transition safely back to their home and wherever their home is. That could be a nursing home, that could be assisted living, that could be back to their home. And so, you know, part part of our responsibility is is their for their ongoing care is we want them to do that in a in a safe fashion. And in and, and in the absence of that, it, there's a stronger likelihood of them end up being hospitalized again, which, right. is, which is certainly not to their advantage. It isn't to our advantage either. Those those inpatient stays are, are costly, both from a human perspective and from a financial perspective. Right. So, so really when people leave us, we, we want to equip them to the best that we can so that, that as strange as this may sound, so, so that we avoid seeing them again in the future. No, absolutely. That's what healthcare is all about. And it also, uh, between you and uh, Avera, uh, ensures you know the quality of the products that they're getting as well. Yeah, yeah I think that, you know, Avera's experience, as I spoke to earlier, having 15 other stores, you know, they have the ability um, to do a lot of custom fitting, whether that be custom lifts, custom wheelchairs. Um, they've got a lot of those experiences within within their workforce. And yeah. So, you know, we're excited to be able to, it's not just coming in and, and getting something off the shelf necessarily. We're all built differently. We all have different needs. And, and to be able to do things in a custom way when that's necessary will, I think, be a great advantage to our patients in the community. Indeed. Now, are all these going to be for, for purchase, Jason? Is it going to be, do you do any rental of, uh, I've seen lift chairs that you know, while you're convalescing that you can rent and then, and then uh, take back or whatever? Yeah, yeah there'll, there'll be an option of both, Jeff, depending upon the type of equipment. Obviously, there's some things that, uh, it, you, you know, if you had sleep apnea, you wouldn't want to share a CPAP machine that, that somebody else necessarily right. has used. But, um, you know, in other instances, uh, you know, wheelchairs may be an example of that. Um, oxygen concentrators are, are typically something that you enter into an agreement on so that those tanks can be refilled on a on an as needed basis sure. and so yes yeah, so both of those options will be available we'll, we'll take uh insurance as well uh you know where, where people have coverage for that medicare medicaid all of the insurances that that we take uh and most insurances provide some coverage for home medical equipment indeed now when's the construction get going and what are you looking for a completion date yeah, we were just visiting about that today. I think we could see construction start somewhere around April 1st, so in the next week or certainly in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's anticipated that the completion of that project will be late summer. Um, I, I think realistically we're looking at a store opening sometime in September. Okay. Uh, I could be surprised and it would be earlier than that, but uh, I think September 1st is probably a conservative date. Okay, and in, any changes to access around Lakes Regional with the construction going on, Jason? Uh, for the most part, Jeff, it won't. The, the construction will be a, a fairly minor remodel of some existing space. Okay. Um, and so we think the construction staging, we can, we can kind of push to the north side of the hospital so that it doesn't occupy any of our existing parking and otherwise. I think we will make some changes and there'll be announcements in the future in terms of our COVID vaccine clinics, particularly as it relates to secondary doses. And at some point in the, in the next couple of weeks, we're, right. we're going to move those actually to the senior center. Okay. So secondary doses, not primary doses. We'll do first doses uh, at, in some portion of Lake's family practice as we have historically. So. All right. Well, I tell you, um, I love all the changes that the pushing the envelope the, and the different things you've done to Lakes Regional Healthcare over the years, you and your board and of course staff uh, doing, giving us the very best services here in Dickinson County and, and just keep coming up with stuff that makes it easier for all of us and keeps us healthier. So, and, and I always like to thank you and your staff 
uh, for help leading the way and uh, keeping us healthy over the past year as well. No, thanks, Jeff. We appreciate that. I, I, of course, we're, we're blessed to have a great healthcare team, both in, in physicians and, and staff. And but we have a very supportive board and a very supportive community. And, and that's why we're here uh, at the end of the day is to, to meet the needs of the community and, and, and to keep them healthy and well and, and meet them where they're at. So I think th- this will be another addition to that. So we're excited about it. All right. Well, uh, we're glad you're here, too. And thanks for joining me today, Jason. Thank you, Jeff. I always appreciate it. All right. My pleasure. Jason Harrington has been here with me, the president and CEO of Lakes Regional Healthcare. We thank him for joining us. We thank you for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast. Okaboji Broadcast from the studios at Historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park is brought to you by the Scott Troutman State Farm Agency in Spirit Lake. Pure Fishing in Spirit Lake, Last Touch Painting and Cleaning, providing interior, exterior, house painting, and professional cleaning services in Spirit Lake. Quest Wealth Management, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, advisor Jan Spielman, AJ Spielman, and Erica Wachholz. Duckies Marine and Motorsports, repair in Spirit Lake. Bank Midwest, dream big, plan wisely, live well. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Attorney Bethany Brands at Brands Law Office in Spirit Lake. Ruth Van Locker at the Lake, where carnivores are welcome on Hill Avenue in Spirit Lake. Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake. B Radiant Laser Skin Studio in the Okaboji Plaza in Okaboji. The YMCA of the Okabojis is the Bedell Family YMCA, building strong families and strong communities.